Matthew chapter 26. If you want a title tonight, the title is simply Gethsemane. We can never, never understand the full agony of Gethsemane, of course. And we will never experience it. Gethsemane, like Calvary, stands as a unique experience which our dear Saviour endured. We see him in the Garden of Gethsemane lying prostrate before God, surrendering himself completely to the will of his Father. We hear him not as I will, but as thou wilt, in verse 39. We see Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and we see him bleeding as he experienced the anguish of the moment, of that moment. We're told in Luke chapter 22 and verse 44, being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling to the ground. In Gethsemane, we see the sinless one wrestling with the horror of being made sin. The one who knew no sin being made sin. We see him being crushed by the awful burden of it all. Being crushed in the place of crushing as he entered into this battle with Satan. We see our Redeemer assailed by sin and evil. The cross which was looming, the cross which was imminent, that wouldn't be the place of final defeat. It would be his throne and a declaration of eternal victory. But here we see him in Gethsemane. And we see the weight of it. But the weight of what we see makes the victory shine all the more brilliantly. When through his glorious resurrection, everything is made right. But Gethsemane was a unique event in the depths to which Jesus went. And Jesus endured all of it. But when we read about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, it's also helpful for us when we experience the seasons of crushing as we try to live for him. Look at verse 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and we know that Gethsemane means a place of crushing. But isn't that an amazing picture? Here is Jesus coming with his disciples into Gethsemane. The disciples 
are coming with Jesus into the place of crushing. That is really significant for us. That's significant for us tonight. That's, I know that's significant for you in your life. That Jesus has come with the disciples. The disciples have gone with Jesus into Gethsemane, the place of crushing. And listen to what he says. Sit ye here. We can't underestimate the power of what Jesus is saying. This instruction from the Lord. He led them to it, was with them in it. But they had to sit there. You see, when we think of this, we say, no, no, no. I don't want to sit in the place of crushing. I, I want to be out of here as quickly as I can. I don't want this experience. But Jesus said, sit here. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. So if you've got a broken heart tonight, if you find yourself in the place of crushing, doesn't this passage speak to you? Jesus is with you. When you and I feel the weight pressing down upon us, in that crushing, that press. Jesus went with his disciples unto Gethsemane. There's not one of us for whom that is not the truth and that's not the experience. And if you're struggling tonight, then you need to listen to that. In the place of Gethsemane are Jesus and his disciples. But then he intends to go further. Jesus intends to go deeper into Gethsemane. Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. This was a place that not all of them would be expected to go. They've entered into that place of crushing and Jesus said, well, I am going further in. I'm going to experience more of the crushing. But do you see, the followers of Jesus Christ, disciples, the pupils, the learners of Jesus, we can't follow him and avoid entering Gethsemane. We can't do it. If we follow Jesus, Gethsemane is on that pathway. Seasons will come when we are in that place and we hear Jesus say, sit here. Lord, please, no. No. Sit here. It's at those times 
we need to realize again that Jesus has led us to Gethsemane. Jesus is with us in Gethsemane. And Jesus intends to go further. He goes deeper. We're sitting there and the crushing has come upon us to produce the best vintage that can come out of us. But he intends to encounter, experience that crushing more fully. Our crushing takes its perspective from his crushing. This message overwhelmed me this week. Because I was seeking a word from God that would lead us into worship and praise and adoration. And the Lord said, Gethsemane. Have you been crushed in your life? Have you felt the crushing? Has it broken you almost? How beautiful is it then? To hear that Jesus led you into that place. That Jesus was with you in that place. But that Jesus has gone further even than that. What's crushed you. It takes its perspective into. From the crushing of the saviour. But not only that. The fact that Jesus leads you into crushing and then says to you, sit here, I'm going further in. I'm going into a deeper experience of this pain. That fact means that Jesus can turn around and come to you in the midst of your crushing and speak tenderly to you. Jesus can come who has experienced more and lay his hand on you. The love that he has for us is that he's with us in the crushing and then he takes more upon himself that he can bring comfort to us. followers of Jesus Christ, may we become learners from Jesus Christ. We need to see our crushing the way the Apostle Paul viewed his in Philippians 3.10 as fellowship in his sufferings. We have a saviour who was crushed before the cross. A saviour who was crushed in this garden of Gethsemane. And if we belong to a saviour who's been crushed, we will know crushing. This is a sense, this is a, a, this is a reason to praise. Because brother or sister, you will never experience anything that takes Christ by surprise. Anything that Christ cannot handle. 
whatever comes into your life or mine, painful, not denying the pain, not denying the reality of it, the upset of it, the grief of it, but nothing we face is too much for Jesus because he went beyond. But when we're in that place, we realize that Gethsemane is a unique experience in its depths with regards to Christ, but it also becomes a unique experience for us in that with regards to human beings, we have this wonderful Savior who is with us when we are in it and who's able to support us in it because he goes beyond it. Isn't that marvelous? Don't you love the Lord Jesus Christ tonight? He went with his disciples into the place of crushing and he said, sit here. I'm going further. I'm going further for your benefit. This precious sanctified fellowship that we enjoy with Jesus Christ. We want fellowship with Jesus. We want to know his presence. We want to surrender ourselves to his leading. That might mean Gethsemane. It will mean Gethsemane. But it means fellowship with a Savior who knows. So brother or sister, if your heart's breaking right now, it's fellowship with Jesus. Oh, pastor, stop speaking like that. You're trivializing what I'm going through. No, you see, when we can see that Jesus is with us in the place of crushing, when we see that Jesus goes beyond what we are experiencing for our sake, it doesn't trivialize our pain and our hurt. It sanctifies it. It lifts it up. It makes it something that we never imagined. It leads us deeper into a fellowship with Jesus. You know that, brothers and sisters. You know that in this church. A church of broken-hearted people. A church of people whose lives have been touched by all sorts of things that we wouldn't want and we wouldn't look for. But Jesus went with his disciples into the place of crushing. I'm going further, he says in verse 36. Look what he says at the beginning of, or look what it says at the beginning of verse uh, 37. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John. I'm going further into the garden of crushing. You sit here. Going further isn't for the mass of disciples. The inner circle, as they're sometimes called, Peter, James, and John. It's probably better to describe these men as those who were walking more intimately with Jesus. Do you see the significance of what it says? Those who were walking most intimately with Jesus were taken by Jesus deeper into Gethsemane.
those who were walking most closely with Christ, he took them deeper in to the crushing. My word. It should be a, a desire for every single one of us to be intimate with Jesus. The church is rebuked for leaving its first love in revolution. You've left your first love. You've not been as intimate with the Savior as you should be. And so we correct that. And we seek to be intimate with Jesus. We're in the Word. We're in prayer. We're with God's people. We're worshipping. We want Him and Him alone. And we don't want anyone else around. It's just Jesus. And go where Jesus leads us. How often do we say things like, Wherever you lead me, I will go. And that's right. That's what we should be saying. And Jesus says to Peter, James, and John, will come with me as I go deeper into the crushing. Are you glad you came to church tonight? Because this is a reason to praise. They were taken deeper in In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, we're told that everyone who wants to live a godly life will be persecuted. That doesn't just mean that there will be those who will oppose us. There will be physical enemies. It means if we seek to live a godly life, if we seek to be intimately close with Jesus Christ, then the enemy is not going to be happy. And we're going to be finding ourselves in a situation where he's coming after us. We find ourselves in an even greater place of crushing than we were before. I know you know. I know you know every time you try to get close to Jesus, the enemy takes notice of you and seeks to destroy you. He says to them, tarry ye, tarry ye here. Verse 38. Tarry ye here. Tarry ye here in the place of deeper crushing. <sighs> you see, the other disciples couldn't have handled this. They were told to tarry where they were, to sit where they were. I'm going further. James, John, Peter, you're coming with me. And then when Jesus gets to that place of fuller crushing. He says to them, now you sit here. You tarry here. Do you feel it when you're going through the press? Of course you do. And then Jesus takes you further in and you feel it all the more. Lord, I'm just trying to walk with you. I'm trying to be what you want me to be. And it's getting harder. Zion, what a beautiful Savior we have. Because look what he says.
my soul is exceeding sorrowful. Even unto death. You see, when we are taken into that place of even deeper experience of crushing, He lets us see the impact of that crushing upon him. You've been crushed. I'm t- I'm t- I've taken you deeper in. Look how it's affecting me. My soul is sorrowful. My soul is sorrowful unto death. Is that not amazing? The crushing that's crushing you right now impacts upon the Lord Jesus Christ and he feels it. Have you ever thought that this goes beyond the moment? That this is the word of God that stands for all time to be applied to his people? That when we are in the place of deeper crushing, Jesus is there and he is experiencing it with us. His soul is sorrowful. He feels your pain. How wonderful. My Jesus, my Savior, feels my pain when I can't handle it. If you experience that, Is that not a reason to praise? When you can see him and what it means to him when his people are struggling, even although he's led them into that deeper experience, even although it's because you're in the the close, intimate circle with Jesus, you're now being crushed beyond what you've imagined. But he feels it. He's saying, I'm exceeding sorrowful. But look what we're told in verse 39. And he went further. He leads the disciples in. He tells them to sit. And then he goes further. And he takes with him those that are most intimate with him and then he tells them to tarry he shows them what it means how he's being impacted by the suffering of his people and then he says and I am going further Jesus wasn't simply crushed with your crushing or mine but Jesus went into the fullness of that crushing he went into the depths of it He he took it all upon himself at the very core. He went where no man could go except the Son of God. And the Son of God went for you and for me. Don't you love him tonight? Can't we praise his holy name for this and this alone? I'm allowed to get excited because this is my Savior. And my Savior has done this for me. And he's done it for you. And he says to you tonight, I will go all the way. Where you cannot go, that's where I will go. There's nothing, there's nothing that he is not about to experience or has experienced for us. 
Yes, you'll feel it. But oh, how beautiful that he feels it. Yes, you'll feel like you can't go on. And Jesus says, you don't have to go any further. You tarry here. I'm going further. Zion, how, do you make, how does that make you feel tonight? We know that our faith is not about feelings, but hey, put that aside. How do you feel tonight? How does this make you feel tonight? Does it make you want to take off your glasses and throw them about the place? How precious is our Savior? Oh, this is a real encouragement for us. We see him on the garden floor. We see him bleeding in his sweat. That's him going further. That's him going beyond. That's what touches us. That's what, I don't know whether you can handle the emotion of that. I'm glad that my faith is a faith that is filled with emotion. It's not all about emotion, but it's filled with emotion. Or are you one of those Christians who can hear all these things and it doesn't touch you? Well, let me tell you, if you're one of those Christians who can hear all of this and it doesn't touch you, then you're not one of those Christians. A heart that is united to Christ, who suffered the fullness of the crushing, must be ready right now to burst out in praise and worship to this beautiful Savior. Our weak little hearts our puny little lips. Surely we must want to be praising God tonight. Reasons to praise. That's why no matter what we're feeling with regards to what the world has done or regards to the circumstances of our lives, we still have a reason to praise. Look at our Savior. Look at our Redeemer tonight. The burden is crushing him. The burden of your sin and mine and the sin of his, of his people throughout the world crushing him. Oh, hallelujah. Because they were in distress, he too was in distress. He chose to be. What touches us is watching our Savior go further than we could ever endure. It's not simply that Jesus is deeply affected in the garden. That's, that is stunning. But it's that he goes further. He goes beyond And so once again, Gethsemane becomes the unique experience of Jesus Christ. Because no one will ever endure this. In a, a sense, 
we see him being crushed by the weight of his sin-crushed disciples. That which crushes me crushes him. That which crushes us is crushing the Savior in the garden. On the floor, Jesus is bearing the weight and he's bleeding in anguish for our sins. For our sorrows. He's being crushed for our iniquities. For me, it was in the garden he prayed. Not my will, but thine. He had no tears for his own griefs but sweat drops of blood for mine. My Savior was crushed. But my Savior didn't stay crushed. Aren't you glad that from the garden he went to the mountain. From Gethsemane, he went to Calvary. From Calvary, he went to the grave. But Jesus is alive, risen and exalted. And so this living Savior comes to us tonight in the midst of our crushing and hurt. And he says to us, I went beyond for you. And I've come back to touch you with my victory. The cross was his throne of victory. And it was heralded by the resurrection. We love a crushed Savior. Who's risen and who stands in this church tonight. I, I'm standing here preaching. And my Savior who was crushed for me is standing right beside me. with his hand on my shoulder. And as I look out and see you all, the Savior who was crushed for you is sitting with you and his hand is upon you. Hallelujah! What a Savior! What a Savior is our Savior! Can't we worship him? Oh, amen. Gethsemane. We must never forget Gethsemane. Heavenly Father, oh, we praise you tonight. We thank you for the willingness of Christ to go beyond and to go deeper in to this experience. Father, help us to see him in the midst of our difficult seasons and to know that nothing we face is too much for Jesus who stands with us and loves us all the way home to glory. Thank you, Jesus, in your own precious 
and holy name. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for Gethsemane. Amen.